Alright guys, welcome back to the channel. In today's video, I'm going to be showing you a, a call that we went out to probably about six months ago. Um, the system was actually low in Freon, and what the customer wanted to do is add leak seal. Um, the reason they wanted to add leak seal to the system is I, they knew that they were it was time to probably go ahead and replace this thing. Um, and they wanted to try to get, you know maybe about another year to give them enough time to um, to save up money to replace the heating and air because as you guys know replacing your heating and air system these days uh, is not a cheap thing to do so uh, but they called in um, said the system wasn't cooling so we're gonna go check it out see what's going on see if the system's low and free on again or there's another problem so if you want to see how I figure this out follow me and I'll show you. Alright guys, what is the first thing that we do when we um, arrive to an AC call? The first thing that I always do um, is basically go into the house, go to the thermostat, and um, basically see if the thermostat has a display on it. If it does have a display, we know that the thermostat has power. Uh, we turn it over to AC, we uh, let everything come on, we go to the vents, we check our, our the air coming out of our vents if we know that air is coming out of the vents then basically we know we have power to the thermostat our blowers working then basically it's set everything will pretty much be good on the inside unit and then we'll uh, run to the outside so um, we just arrived let's go ahead and look at that thermostat and uh, see what's going on here all right guys the customer was with me uh when was, when i was going inside so i didn't want to film uh, with them there but i did turn on the um the thermostat turn it to air conditioning turn it down um heard the thermostat click the fan started running so we know that uh the thermostat works that uh the the furnace has power so now we're gonna go check out the uh condensing unit and see what's going on all right, we'll walk around to the condensing unit. And I'm not hearing anything running. Let me show you right here. Okay, first thing I do is I listen um, and see what that can kind of give you some ideas. I do hear the contactor in the in here pulled in and I hear a humming coming from my fan motor but my fan motor isn't turning so for some reason it tells me my motor is getting power but it's not turning uh, so let's pull the disconnect and then I'll flip the breaker and let's see what's going on and why this Why this isn't coming on? Maybe hopefully you can see. All right, I'm gonna take my panel off. All right, guys. Um, a little pro tip on this um, I already know what's going on with it uh, just by looking um, here is our panel it's the capacitor and how I know that I've seen so many of them you can see the top of this capacitor how it's actually blown it's got like an oval on it that should be flat and uh, you can actually you can actually feel oil um, on the top of the capacitor so basically it, it basically ring, rings true with what we found we heard the contactor pulled in which this is your contactor right here and you see that little opens up and goes down that's pulled in we heard that we heard that buzzing we felt and heard power going to our condenser fan motor but it wasn't spinning and when these capacitors go out that gives the enough torque to that motor to turn everything on. We didn't hear the compressor kicking kicking on because um, that capacitor starts your compressor as well. So basically, 
one of the most common problems with the AC unit is a capacitor and this is just a uh, typical bad capacitor call so let's change that capacitor out and I'll show you when we take it out you know what to look for and how to how to match the capacitor up all right I've got the capacitor out and I'm going to show you um, here's the capacitor here hopefully you can read the nameplate on here uh, what you want to look for is a comparators capacitors are rated in microfarads and the abbreviation for that is UF so uh, what you want to do this is a dual capacitor so you actually have two capacitors in one so you have a common um, leg of the capacitor you have a, a a port that goes to your compressor and also a port that goes to your fan now on the top I don't know if you can see on this capacitor you have little words written on the top see this one has fan I don't know if you can read that there so that goes to your fan um, fan wire you have one over here that says HEMR that's for your compressor wire and you have one right here that usually says C and that's your common that's your your power going into your capacitor so basically what you want to do when you replace a capacitor you want to look at the UF rating this one right here says 45 the, you have two num two numbers 45 UF and a 7.5 UF what that means is the one for your compressor is a 45 microfarad capacitor the one for your fan is a 7.5 so when you replace this capacitor you want to look for a 45 slash 7.5 UF capacitor and you always want to look at the, um, the the VAC rating and basically get the uh, compatible VAC rating and I'll show you there's that there that should be that one is rated 440 so if when you go buy this to your supply house what you want to ask for is a 45 slash 7.5 dual capacitor at a VAC rating of 440 so what I'm going to do is I'm going to get this capacitor put in and let's test it out and uh, make sure it works all right uh, for you HVAC professionals out there, uh, you may be asking, well, Travis, you uh, replaced that capacitor. Yeah, it was it was over on the top, but how do you know that that capacitor is bad? Basically, I was just really telling for homeowners, you know, that's an easy way to tell a capacitor is bad. But let's um, basically go the official way. Let's verify that this capacitor is bad. Um, I've got a multimeter here. I've got it set on my microfarad reading. Um, so let's check this capacitor. So I'm going to check between my common and my compressor. Got it checked between common and hermetic, check our compressor capacitor. As we see, we're getting zero. Now let's check between common and our uh, fan, see what we're getting. All right, we got it set between common and fan, and we're getting zero. So we just verified the capacitor uh, is bad by a multimeter. I knew it was bad because of the oval top. Um, so let's go ahead, get it put on get it started and make sure everything works all right I just got the capacitor put on let's go ahead and turn it on turn the breaker back on make sure it starts up all right we hear the um, the compressor kick on if you can hear that but we have something that's not happening our motor isn't turned on um, basically when I got here we saw that everything was um, was on the customer had the system on let me turn everything off right quick and I'll explain the customer had the system in AC and it was running with a uh, a bad capacitor what can end up happening when you run a system for a long time with a bad 
dual capacitor, it can overheat the two things that it's trying to start. Uh, for instance, your, your compressor and your, um, and your motor. Now, with this motor to the touch, you can feel it as hot as a firecracker. So basically, what we've got to do is uh, we've got to cool that that mo that motor down. Uh, same way, if you replace the capacitor, you turn it back on. Compressor or your fan isn't coming on. It could very well be that the compressor or and the the fan motor are are overheated. So what you've got to do is you've got to take a water hose. You've got to cool that down and uh, then see if everything starts up so what i'm going to do is i'm going to take a water hose i'm going to cool down this um this condenser fan motor and we'll try it again all right guys we got the uh motor cooled down you can see everything is is wet let's try it and see if everything starts up it's a good sign our fan is running we can hear our compressor running so basically, the whole problem with this was a, du a dual capacitor, but uh, always remember when you replace a capacitor on any service call, always check your Freon charge after you do it to make sure your Freon is good. Uh, always go into your um, your inside unit, either at your vents or up at the, um, the furnace itself. Check your return temperature, check your supply temperature, make sure you're getting around an 18 degree temperature drop. The worst thing in the world to do is, you know, replace a capacitor and uh, and leave saying everything's good, and you didn't check that stuff, and the customer calls back an hour later, says it's still not cooling, and you have to come back and uh, end up finding out it's low in Freon, or you didn't verify your, your temperature drop, and you find out there could be another problem. So basically, this is one of the most common uh, problems with the air conditioner, um, is a dual capacitor pops and I uh, won't turn any, anything on. So guys, we're done with this video today. I hope you learned something. If you have any uh, questions or comments, please put them down in the description. And um, as always, another heating and air catastrophe fixed. So uh, hope you guys have a good day and I will see you on the next video. Thanks guys.